Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a 7-Eleven. This is a more modern, up-to-date version of the store. We have multiple extras. We have vending machines, we have hot dog stands, we have coffee machines, we have ourselves a slushy machine, we have a product section, we have fridges, we have freezers, we have a bunch of aisles, a really cool till area and quite frankly this sign here reminds me of burger king and i don't know why this is the amount of space required to make your build feel free to make this grid in your world if you do feel as though it will help you out and here are all of the materials that we will use throughout the build please do make sure that you have access to all of these we are going to begin by coming to the front left hand corner of the grid if you've made it and count backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Place a black stone wall on this position. Now, right of this, we want to leave a gap of three and place a wall. And then once again, gap of three, place a wall. 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 We should have one, two, three, four, five, six walls in total. In addition to this, we want to take the very first wall that we placed, leave a gap of three behind it, place a wall. Leave a gap of three behind that, place a spruce plank. On the right side of the build, we want to place behind this wall three black stained glass pane, one, two, three, extending backwards, and then a row of 17 spruce. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now, extending across the back of the build, we want to place two spruce planks, one, two, five glass, one, two, three, four, five, and then simply place spruce planks extending right, and then eventually forwards, like this. So the end result should look exactly like that. Perfect. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to dig underneath all of the walls. We're going to dig around the outside of them as they join together and replace the grass or whatever material might be with black concrete. So, digging around the outline of our 7-Eleven. Replace it using black concrete, only the outside blocks. We don't want any of the inner blocks of which are now grass to be replaced with anything else other than quartz bricks later on. Don't forget the black stained glass pane at the back and the end result should look like this. So, in doing this, I think that this is actually a great time to also refloor the inside. So, we're going to get rid of all of the grass and replace it using quartz bricks. Feel free to change the quartz bricks into something else. However, I would make it a light floor if you do. Still some form of quartz, maybe a light wood, oak, birch, something like that. It's up to you. Okay, perfect. So the next job for us is going to be to extend up all of the polished blackstone walls by two. So one, two, one, two, one, two, so on and so forth, and we want to extend every single one of them upwards. In addition to this, we are going to do the exact same thing using the spruce planks. We are going to extend the spruce planks each upwards by two, and we are going to place glass in between the blackstone wall and also when necessary on the back where we have the decent sized window. All right, perfect. The next thing that we are going to do is place black concrete all the way around the top of our build as well. So this next part is going to seem a little bit weird, but 
we want to, using white concrete, place a row of white concrete that extends left to right or right to left on top of the building, but one row behind the black concrete that we have at the front of the building. This white concrete area also wants to be four rows high in total. And this is where we are going to place the colourful branding of 7-Eleven and also the little logo as well. It will go directly in front of all of this white concrete. And speaking of which, we are now going to, in front of the bottom row of white, place an entire row of red concrete extending all the way to the right, so just directly on top of the black concrete that we've placed. The next layer is going to be lime green. It starts all the way over here on the left, and we line it up over here. So this is the entrance on the front of the building. It's not this glass panel here. It's the one to the left, and we actually want to open it up and we want to also place some end rods in front of the middle set of pane. So just to kind of distinguish this from the rest of the front. Then we want to grab orange concrete and starting from the left we want to place orange on top of the lime green and it wants to extend and line up with this black stone wall. So hopefully you can see the individual points which I have used to kind of line these sets of colours up. And with these colours, we actually we will do it later, but what we are going to do is we're going to extend the black concrete area forwards. So this is going to create a bit of depth and then we want to take the entrance area between this black stone wall here and this black stone wall here. We want to extend it out and then extend a further two rows left and right and then extend a further row forward. So the end result will look like this. It's a little difficult to see, but it, it just helps create a bit of depth. It just looks a little bit better. We also want to mark out where the logo is going to go. This actually goes in between where we have this glass pane here and this glass pane here, except above. And it's marked out using a set of two by three white concrete that kind of just extends forwards like this with some smooth quartz slabs on top as well. I'm very tempted also just to make the banner as it is very simple. It just requires a loom, white banner, two red dye, throw the loom down, open it up, throw the white banner in there with the red die. We start off with a horizontal row of red at the top, and we place a diagonal row, top right corner to bottom left corner, boom, just like that, and there we have our seven. And it just goes right there. Technically speaking, the top of the seven or the bottom, I can't remember which way around, I think it is the diagonal portion should be orange, but I think it looks better in just red. I will leave you to decide what you want to do with that information, whether you want to change it or not. So the next part of this actually requires a lot of mass building, which is a lot easier with World Edit, and I am highly considering it. But just for the sake of this video, we are going to not do that. So we want to extend the white concrete along the edges or rather, this is an easier way to think about it. We want to place white concrete on top of the black concrete that we already have, and we essentially just want to extend the entire white concrete shape that we have on the front of the build already along the black concrete. What I would also be tempted to recommend is to also fill in the inside of the roof, and to do it starting from here. So, just to give the roof a sense of depth when we put some skylights in, there's going to be skylights. I would recommend leaving a row of five blocks available, so just to visually, one, two, three, four, five, and then everything above this line fill in using white concrete. So, this includes the sides, but also everywhere above the row of five lines. So, this is going to make the roof rather thick. Okay, I think that we're actually going to leave the roof here. We're going to leave it with one row at the top so that we kind of have like a little safety wall. 
It'll also look a little bit better in terms of depth because we are more than likely going to be able to see the top of this build in the surrounding area with the way that I have my city planned out. So, now that we have done that, the next job is for us to extend the colourful parts of the sign round. So, this is just going to be the red. And I think I'll extend it as far as the spruce here, the lime, and also the orange. So, it just looks a little bit nicer and also reminds me of Burger King. But, regardless of that, I don't know why it reminds me of Burger King. It must have the same colours in the logo, either that or I'm just dumb, which is very, very real possibility. So, now that we've done that, we are going to grab the smooth stone, the grey concrete, the white concrete. We'll also grab some leaves, and this is all we'll need to do for this particular next part. So, basically, we are going to dig two entire rows in front of our 7-Eleven, only in front of the actual building portion though, we don't need to do anything to that right side. This will get filled in with smooth stone. In addition to this, we are going to dig a row of white concrete directly left of where the entrance is. It's a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, row of white concrete extending here. The rest of this area is going to be turned into smooth stone so i'll tell you what we will extend that stone path to the right as well so that will get dug out that will get turned into smooth stone and then the areas in between these two rows of white concrete will get segmented into car parking spaces so it'll be a row of white free gray white free gray etc etc we are also going to have leaves that sit on the side of the building. So these leaves are just going to, I'll extend them all the way to the back and then around to where the window is and then they won't go any further. And in doing this, this kind of lays out nicely what has to be done. So we're going to dig out this little area here, replace it with smooth stone, same just directly in front of 7-Eleven and we will also extend all of the car park spaces backwards as well. Okay, perfect. That's looking really good already. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to make some of the other stuff in front of 7-Eleven. So there's not too much here. We will need some paintings, we'll need blue concrete, we'll need the quartz stairs, some bookshelves, glass blocks, some stone buttons, um, cauldrons, we'll need a birch fence gate and some chains. And the first thing that we'll do is the most complicated out of all of them, which is still rather easy. Little vending machine, it's dead simple. So directly in front of this black stone wall here, we're going to place a row of two blue concrete just extending outwards. I do want to say two, but I think it's actually three, I think. Okay. No, it might just be two. So left of the first blue concrete, we're going to place two rows of bookshelves. On the end, bottom, we'll place blue concrete, extend forwards, to the right, upside down stairs joining backwards, and then a series of glass blocks just in front of all of this. In addition to this, it will place a couple of stone buttons just on the side, and I think that that makes just like a really nifty, simple looking vending machine. Hopefully. I'm also remembering that we need carpet for this, just to kind of like top the vending machine, just like this. So blue carpet, because it's blue of course. And then in front of this, I think that we will have some trolleys or what do... Are they called carts? I don't... Shopping carts, maybe? I think that that sounds right, but we call them trolleys over here. So extending from the leaves, we'll have a few rows of chains equal in length to the vending machine. And then a couple of cauldrons dispersed kind of like this with open birch fence gates. Just looks like uh, trolleys or shopping carts. And what we're now going to do is we will place some paintings in the windows of our 7-Eleven. And these can be dispersed in any sort of which way, <laughs> of course it's the same, any sort of which way that you want. The idea here is that it just looks like posters of advertisements for stuff, as you are likely to see in shop windows and uh, stuff of the like. So that's looking pretty good. I'm very, very happy with that so far. And that sort of concludes the entire outside of 7-Eleven.
So, believe it or not, 7-Eleven is actually very, very simple on the inside, just like me. We're going to grab black stained glass block. We also need bookshelves, but I think that we also need to dip into our chest over here. So, we will be needing light grey concrete, sea lanterns, iron trap doors, light blue stained glass, end rods, and we will of course need a bunch of other stuff as well. We we should probably actually grab it instead of being a tad bit lazy, like we'll need the chains for later on, we'll need the lanterns for later on, we need the spruce planks, we'll be using some grass block, we need the spruce stairs, some spruce trap doors, some spruce buttons, and I'll tell you what, we'll actually leave it at that. So, in grabbing all of this stuff, we are first of all going to set out the aisles. The aisles are very simple. I, I always reuse these aisles. Um, it's basically bookshelves because they're so ambiguous that I think that they make perfect aisles. Directly, I guess it's it's right inside here. Like where this blackstone wall of the entrance is on the right, we're going to leave a gap of three, one, two, three, and then we're going to place a bookshelf. This bookshelf will extend and it will extend by seven towards the that side of 7-Eleven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, and we want to double up on that row. So in doing that, extending from this wall here, extending seven rows, so just one shy of this blackstone wall, we then want to leave a gap of three, do the same gap of three, do the same extending towards the back of our 7-Eleven. And these are going to be the aisles. If you would like to make these a tad bit more complicated, feel free. I'll even show you how to do it, but we will be doing that later on. So, these are the aisles, so to speak. Just the regular, good old, generic aisles. Now, the significance to these is that these allow us to place the skylights. So, in between the bookshelves, I want to have skylights that correspond... What can I get rid of? Quick, there we go. I want to have skylights that correspond to the gaps in between the bookshelves, if that makes sense. So, and you know, this is going to take a little bit of repairing and stuff. I'm sure that we'll make a mess. But these skylights just sit in between the shelves and they are they're exactly where the empty space is. So they will look exactly like this and they will be a massive help um, with a source of light because it's actually very, very, despite all of the windows, despite all of my attempts to improve it using lanterns and end rods and sea lanterns, we still have quite a dark inside of the store. So, as I said, to counteract that, we're providing three giant skylights that are nice and strategically placed just in between all of these aisles. And this is why we have the black stained glass to fill them in. And it's up to you whether you want to place the black glass at the top of the hole or at the bottom of the hole. I'm opting for the top. So from the inside, it looks uh, we get a greater sense of depth. But from the inside, but from the outside, rather, it is a little bit more boring because, of course, it's just a giant smooth surface. So it's kind of up to you to pick uh, which plane you want to place them in. Um, I like it as is, and I think that they look really, really cool. So in doing that, we've provided ourselves with a bit of light, but we can also now place the fridge slash freezer section. So this starts on the left side of our 7-Eleven, just directly next to the window where the spruce starts, and we want to place a light grey concrete on the ground. Leave a gap of two, light grey concrete, gap of two, light grey concrete, so on and so forth, extending all the way along the side. We'll be placing sea lanterns in the floor. We'll extend the light grey concrete forwards and add two rows of light grey concrete on top of each light grey concrete. We'll then install shelves inside of these, which you can choose to fill or not. So we'll place, we'll literally place them in such a way that you can place stuff on the shelf. And then the next shelf, we won't be able to place stuff on. So we'll leave an entire, uh, an entire row and then fill the outer space in using light blue glass because it looks like chilled glass. And we will then be using end rods on the left side of the fridge slash freezers like this suspended in the air just like that and that looks kind of perfect 
to which uh, we are then just going to fill above these in using black concrete and then white concrete. So just like this. Perfect. So just directly above the fridge slash freezers. And that also provides a good bit of light as well. Like I said, the whole game here is to try and make it nice and bright. And something that I also tried is suspending chains on the ends of the skylights here that just so happen to kind of dangle above the ends of the bookshelves. And this also helps to provide a little bit of light as well. And you will notice, despite our efforts, it is still quite dark in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like whatever we do it just isn't quite enough so along this back wall we are going to have a little produce section so this is made using spruce planks i did also consider dark oak spruce uh spruce planks spruce stairs spruce trap door spruce buttons glass grass block chain lanterns so these correspond to the bookshelves so we want to have a couple of spruce planks extending from one side of the bookshelf here to the other so like it's the same width of the bookshelf grass block in between the back pair and then two upside down stairs extending in from both sides with spruce planks in between spruce buttons in front of the planks and then we want to extend the planks up on the left and right sides and i think that we'll do yeah we'll do two rows you could even do one if you wanted to. I'm considering one like this, and it might look a little bit better. And we're just going to place uh, trapdoors on the side, so it's kind of like this. There's not really a particular method or reason to that, but I, I just kind of like how it looks. And we are also going to suspend from the ceiling a series of chains. This is a very modern... This is a very, very modern 7-Eleven, I guess, with some lanterns. And once again, this is just to help provide a little bit of light. That's the whole deal here, really. You could even, if you wanted to, extend this a little bit more forwards. You see, um, it. unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to get another set of bookshelves and then also have the produce section. So if you want to make the produce section a little bit bigger, if you wanted to add something in between, like it would be possible to add, say, bargain bins in between here, like this, but you're getting a little bit close to these shelves. But you could add, you know, quote-unquote bargain bins and use spruce trap doors. It, it gets a little bit crowded, but, you know, it's, it's a complete design choice. I'd probably use black concrete to fill the insides of them in, or alternatively something like this. Again, I kind of keep going back to the same sort of um, the same sort of ideas, but for the, a reason. I mean, you know, it, it does look kind of good. So we could have like one here and then one here, and it's it's just kind of like a, a little more interesting produce section, I suppose. And what we can also do is... I'm getting rid of all this stuff. I don't even know if I need it. I don't... I, I probably also have this <laughs> as well in the uh, in the chest. But um, just... There we go. So just hoe all of this out. And just a different set of produce. So carrots, potatoes. I like beetroots. All of my little favorites here. Not to eat, but to look at. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, except potatoes. Potatoes are good. Nice and versatile. Excellent. Best of the vegetables, if you ask me. Only in the form of chips and crisps, though. So, in doing all of that, um, we've kind of made, like, a, ni a really nice little section. And it, it does go without saying, hopefully. But something that we... I wish I could just type in meat. And... Um, where are we? So beef and chicken. So uh, hopefully it goes without saying that we are able to add further details to the build. Like, if you want to fill these fridges and freezers in with stuff, then you are more than welcome to. Of course, it adds the immersion and it it does obviously add to the... That, that could be anything really, I suppose. It does kind of just add to it to actually fill the fridges and freezers up, to fill up the produce areas. It, it just does make it look a little bit more interesting, a little bit 
better. Like I really, I really like this section. Like this is my favorite half. It just looks so nice and so clean. Um, you could also, of course, add something in the corner here, but then we're getting into territory where it's like, how much is too much? Like, if you wanted to, say, just add a couple of carts just off to the side, then that, I I would say, is, uh, you know, a completely valid design choice. But I, I don't really want to fill it in too much, you know? But again, it's, it's kind of up to you. You could also do the same thing here. There ends up being some empty space um, over this direction. Uh, so, in doing that, we have a few other bits to design and make. So, I think that this set of materials right here will actually help us finish the build. I don't think that we'll need anything else. I'm going to use the orange concrete, bookshelves, yellow concrete, red concrete, smooth quartz stairs, heavy weighted pressure plate, light grey concrete, iron trapdoor, item frame. Why don't they just call it iron pressure plate? So. Now that we have all of this stuff, we have to first of all make the counter space. It's relatively easy, directly in front of where the spruce starts here, kind of like on this back wall, we're going to place a yellow concrete. In front of that, a red concrete. Left of that, a yellow, red, yellow, and behind these, light grey concretes. Now on the corner here, we, where we have the red concrete, we'll leave a gap of one, Place an orange. That is an item frame. Place an orange. Extend the orange left by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we are going to join to this back wall. So the space in between here, we want to fill in with bookshelves connecting to the light gray concrete on the right. We will also place bookshelves extending upwards, two rows. And on top of this orange concrete that connects to the back as well, we will also place more bookshelves. Directly to the left of this, we will place red concrete extending up, joining to the ceiling, and also an additional row forward to create depth. Behind this, we want to grab... I don't think we need orange anymore. We want to place two entire rows of white concrete extending, joining to the ceiling, red concrete on the left of it, doing the same thing, and then we want to join the red concrete to the ceiling. We want to extend it forwards. Join it together at the top, Place upside down quartz stairs joining the bottom together. Light grey concrete joining at the top as well. Item frames in front. Perfect. This is the beginnings of a coffee machine. Directly to the left of this, we want to place a row of one, two, three white concrete extending up from the ground, filling in this gap. And then we are going to, on the left here, place a yellow concrete. Oh, sorry, a red concrete, then a yellow. Then we need blue, like this. And then at the bottom, upside down smooth quartz stairs connecting left and right. And then we are going to grab dark prismarine slab, red glass, yellow glass, blue glass. And we are going to place the corresponding glass in front of the concrete, like this, with dark prismarine slabs on top extending forwards to which we are then going to add more detail the, to these machines. We're going to grab levers, trip wire hooks, flower pots, yellow candle, uh, light blue candles, but you could also grab red as well. We'll need the cocoa beans, detector rail, and that might be that, but we'll grab lanterns too. So, this is a slushy machine. We're going to have a couple of trip wire hooks, a lever, and then along the bottom, a mixture of any sort of thing that you like of yellow. Uh, we can have just like yellow candles to represent a yellow slushy, blue to represent a blue, or if you want to get crazy, you can intermix the colors as well. You can make pretty much any color with those, so go crazy. And you could also have a pot as well as kind of like a like a default sort of. Uh, to the right of this, this is a coffee machine, so we're going to have a detector rail, good old regular flower pot, and a trip wire hook above one of them, and a lever above the other. Cocoa beans inside the item frames, hopefully to further represent what this is supposed to be. And then we also need a detector rail over here where we have the light grey concrete. Um, we also want to place like a lantern or two, maybe just on the two corners of this area here, or maybe just behind, maybe like one on the corner, one on, on the bookshelves, and then one on the corner here. Uh, we also need, let me see, we need quartz stairs, heavy weighted pressure plate, aka iron pressure plate, and then we need some uh, iron trap doors, 
item frames, stuff to put in the item frame. So that's going to be raw beef, glass pane, and some smooth quartz slabs. So on here, we're going to have smooth quartz slabs and heavy weighted pressure plate, just like this. We're going to place two rows of glass on the, should we just have one? No, we'll have two rows of glass on top of the yellow and the red concretes. And we actually want to leave it a little bit open at the bottom as well, actually. And we'll also place just uh, to create a shelf. How do we want to do this? So we want to use iron trap doors, right? And they want to be in front of the top half of these two lower spruce planks. We'll actually be able to place item frames below them with some raw beef on top. Uh, we can even place item frames on top of the uh, trap doors as well. But the end result is we want to place some smooth quartz slabs on top to kind of like create an enclosed case. And if you wanted to, like, these are basically just to represent, like, hot dogs or something similar to that. So if you wanted to go a little bit of a step further and place, like, banners and stuff, then you absolutely could. Same thing with the slushy machine. And this, this is kind of it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know whether to create a giant skylight that kind of, like, lights this area up or whether to kind of, like, keep it a little bit dark or not. I think that I'll leave you guys to decide that. And, well, that's, that's kind of it, actually. <laughs> and that is that, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you have enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have, consider subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, click that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you do want to make anything else by me, check out the description below for the City Builds playlist and also the top of the comment section. It will be linked there. If you have any interest whatsoever in walking around Stream City for yourself, in owning it, in downloading it, then channel members gain access to a brand new fresh download link to Stream City Java Edition only every single time it is updated. You'll be able to find that in the community tab if you are indeed a member. And you'll be able to have own walk around modify your very own version of stream city if you're interested thank you so much for watching everybody i hope to see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>